Uh, hi everyone. Welcome to Sunday. I'm not sure what the date is. The 21st, I guess, of February 2020. And uh, settling in slowly, you can see that there's less boxes around me. And I wanted to put at least something behind me so that there was something energetic when you were watching the video. That happens to be a, um, a healing temple at uh, Chichen Itza in uh, Yucatan, Mexico. It's a little bit out of the way from where tourists normally go, and I happened to bump into it by accident, but it's um, a pretty spectacular little place. So it's a very short video today just to check in with you, and, and I w I've been wondering for a few days, of course, in the midst of all the work that's getting done here, what's the first thing I should share with you? And, and I was looking on my Facebook feed. Uh, it's, some of you know I'm on Facebook, but I don't ever use it. Basically, I just read other people's posts. And a post came up that showed, um, like, some, some recent modern art that was from an artist that was selling for millions of dollars. Two million, five million, ten million, more. And uh, it just... And I don't know if I've talked about modern art and ancient art on, on a video before, but... Even if I did, it just it just struck me that we have to talk about this again. And it's, it's, it's a small little area. I have like three pages in my book. And exposing the expositions, I've got like three pages of this concept. So I'm just going to talk a little bit of a general overview, read these few pages for you and get you really thinking. Because, you know, what's selling for these $10, $15 million? Is it these pictures you're seeing on the screen now? These are photos I took from my last trip to Rome at the end of 2019 when you could still leave and enter countries like a human being. And uh, so is it any of these pictures? No, it's these. These are the pictures that are selling for millions of dollars. And this ties in very importantly with when we talk about historical buildings and the ancient, the, the, the ancient buildings and the way they're constructed and the way they're set up and the, and the type of stone they're used and the beauty of them compared to modern buildings. And there's a reason behind all of this. There's a, there, there's a, there's a serious issue that's been going on in stealing human knowledge, stealing human energy, stealing human advancement. And that's why I think this is really, really important to discuss what's gone on here. Oh, my cat, I guess, is tired of my talking. So I'm just going to read you the chapter, show you a few photos as we go along, and then have a, have a little discussion at the end. I want to present why this ancient architecture is important from the standpoint of energy and psychology. When I see any modern building, such as the new Chicago Fed Federal Building of the 1960s in Chapter 3 on your screen now, it is all functional use of space. It is devoid of soul, devoid of energy because it is not built from ancient principles, and that symbolizes our modern world. Now look again at the same Chicago Federal Building, the one that was there and that was taken down in 1908. It has energy and life and more. It is almost alive, bringing Greece, Rome, and Egypt to our doorsteps and our life. And that is because I do not think these older buildings are emulating a style from the ancient world. They may have been part of that same world. The builders of the modern fairs were far closer in time to the Parthenon in Greece than the latter modern building is. Not only have we been lied to, we have had the very structures that create harmony, healing, and balance taken away. They were not just things to look nice, though great effort was done to do that. Their entire layout, geometry, use of Tesla energy, sound cymatics, and the like went into them. It may have become a courthouse after the reset of the 1850s, but what it was before that is unknown. Perhaps part of a giant whole of harmonic principles equal to that what can be found in Chartres, the Duomo, Luxor Temple, or any great edifice. These truly are, were temples, and we are losing the few that are left daily. How soon might all the memory of these buildings be gone, lost in the tenor of modern art, a few black lines drawn on a canvas, or the new federal building. I had never understood why this was true until I ran into the book Serpent in the Sky by John Anthony West about 20 years ago, 
who'd used an entire chapter to present how the ancients viewed art. While it was not something to be looked at or create certain feelings or ideas in the person looking at it, it was done to create universal harmony and to create a un an energetic exchange from the piece of artwork, be it a statue or a painting or a building, and every human who was coming to it. That was, that was important. Every single person viewing it should, should occur from the art, in fact, the very space on earth, to harmonize the ground, the sky, the person, and the animal into one infused harmonic whole. So it wasn't meant, any art in the ancient world wasn't meant to be looked at, say, oh, I wonder what the, uh, what the artist was thinking. I, I wonder what they were feeling when they made this. It was about an instant illumination, an instant energetic charge, an instant connection with the sky, the earth, the, the world around you. Every single statue, every single painting, every single building, all of it. That's important to understand. And that means all the old buildings that we talk about on channels like mine or John's or Campbell's or whoever. And we talk about these ancient structures that were part of World's Fairs or whatever they were part of. They're built with these harmonic principles and they're built to be something very, very special. It can be seen yeah, in every statue or painting in, in Florence, every cathedral, every monastery. That was the old world. The, the world the modern has wanted to destroy, to control the minds of the masses and make us all unquestioning slaves. How can the lines on a canvas like this possibly compare to da Vinci's Annunciation or Botticelli's Primavera is beyond me. It again shows just how many levels of brainwashing has occurred. Do not forget that one of the main financiers of the modern art museums was John Rockefeller. He was not putting his money into something to help humanity, but help his elite cause. Brainwash the people into thinking the old beauty needs to be destroyed or hidden in the back of a museum, while the new, modern, soulless junk is portrayed as the ideal. I saw this displayed again just recently on a research trip to Nantes, France, a former ancient white city. And this was in early 2019. The main level of the art gallery is stunning. Beautiful ancient building with also beautiful 16th and 17th century religious and wisdom style art. So perfect, some of it appears as if the paintings are photographs, layered with symbolism and perfected geometry. But then my wife and I decided to take a quick look at the modern art section before we left. While of course ugly, when we reached what was called the chapel, we got the shock of shocks. Here was a beautiful 1700s church that had most of the artwork and fine sculpture removed, though bits of it were still left higher on the walls, but everything else was gone. What would have been an ornate ceiling was layered over with a series of wooden planks. Inside were 40 television sets all blaring children or older people, screaming or blowing whistles or cars exploding. This is what was being presented as art, while the very building used to present it, actual ancient art of soul and harmony, was mostly destroyed to showcase the modern lie. Nothing presented this loss and brainwashing of the masses more clearly than this. Go to Nantes yourself and see it. But if you do go to the museum, start at the chapel and get that out of your system. Finish your experience with the two hours of that beauty. That is where the power and the healing is. That is what our world should and used to be. Take a, take a, just take a glimpse for anybody who's been to Florence or been to Rome or been through the Louvre in Paris or whatever, been through the British Museum. Imagine that most of a lot of that artwork was not hidden in someone's home. It was not hidden in a museum. It was open. It was on the streets. It was in buildings. You walk the streets seeing things like this. You walk the streets seeing things like this. You went into buildings, into people's homes, into you know various uh, government agencies, or what. And this is what you were. This is the energy you were being. You were being absorbed with, daily hourly it's unfathomable to our world when you walk around a modern city and think yeah a functional use of really ugly energy draining space as opposed to this 
Again, if you're wondering, if you're really wondering, how did we get to where we are now? How did we get where a population can be so easily controlled, manipulated? How easy it is to drop frequency levels in this realm to get, to create the hypnosis that's required for what's going on now. You need to look no further than the change of ancient artwork and not just not just the big pyramids and the the work at, at Teotihuacan or or Tiwanaku in Bolivia or I mean just take it even into the modern semi-modern era 500 years ago what was being built by and made by da Vinci and Michelangelo and and uh, Botticelli just them how about the Dutch masters, the, the, the great painters of Holland? How about some of the great painters of the 1600s I talk about, like Poussin, and what they, were, what they were inscribing in their artwork? You don't have to go to ancient Greece and ancient Rome and Egypt. It was here, three or four hundred years ago, being produced on a daily basis all over the world. The artwork of China, of India, of South America, it's all there. And within a hundred years, that's all it's taken, has been a complete brainwash, first of what beauty is, of what, of what, what pleasing to the eye should be. Think about, think about how brainwashed the population is. Think how brainwashed you still might be. Use what I've just said as a way to rip out this old junk conditioning. Strengthen what's really there. Think about a healing spot like what's behind me. It looks really simple. It would have had a small roof covering the side. The, open, the middle part would have been open. Think about that temple. Just being in the temple behind me for 10 minutes and think about the rest of the modern world. It's nowhere near the same. I'll see you in a few days with the next chapter of Falling for Truth. Uh, I started reading the uh, documents, the part of the Nag Hammadi document I wanted to do, but it didn't come out well. I just didn't like the presentation. So I'm going to try it again after I do the chapter in a week and see if I can present it better. And I want to do one, <clears throat> one specific historical video. I have a couple of ideas, and when I, do the, when I do one of the next videos, I'll leave it as the bottom of, the, of a question to ask where which which uh, area you would most like me to do a video on of these couple two or three choices that I have so thanks for joining in thanks for supporting the channel thanks for being patient to wait for my little bit of chaos to um, slow down and begin to settle a bit and uh, get used to my new space and uh, yeah we'll have the next chapter of falling for truth out uh, sometime this week See you soon.